What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render tutorial for you. So in this series we're going to start diving a little bit deeper into some of the settings contained inside of D5 Render. In this first video we're going to take a look at the environment settings. So things like the sunlight as well as the HDRI background images that you can use to light your scenes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project with our SketchUp model. So we're just going to click on Create New, and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to find our model. In this case, this one right here. And model credit for this model is The House by Doi K. And this is a model that I've wanted to render for a while, so you'll probably see it again in future videos. But basically, what we have is we have a house model that was built inside of SketchUp. So we're going to bring this in and take a look at it inside of D5 Render. So what I really wanted to do in this video is talk about some of the environmental lighting settings contained inside of this program. So these are the uh, basically the settings that you're going to use in order to add lighting um, as a part of your environment. So we're not going to talk about like the point lights and the spotlights, the more artificial lights. We're going to focus on the environment in this video. And then we'll have another video where we focus more on the, uh, the artificial type lights. And so really there's three things that I like to consider when I'm looking at rendering. Oh, and by the and the other thing is we're just going to render this model as is. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time going in and changing materials. Let's just see what kind of result we can get with just what's built into the SketchUp model. We could always go back and make changes later. So there's really three environmental lighting settings to consider when looking at this. So there's the sunlight, so the sun location of the artificial sun. There's the skylight, which is the light that's getting brought in as a part of the background or as a part of the environment and then the exposure settings. So the exposure settings can be found inside of the filter um, under your tone mapping, there's an option for exposure. And so we're, what we're gonna try to do is we're going to try to get all three of these to work together to create a realistic image. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna create a scene where I can just see the front of this house. So I'm just gonna go over into my list, click the plus button to add a scene. So now I can come back to this camera view if I ever rotate around, I can click here to come back to that. When I look at this scene, the first thing I notice is that it's very washed out, right? So everything's very white. Um, you can't really see very much about the materials. Everything's kind of overwhelmed. And so when I see that, that usually means that it's overexposed. So the first thing I'm gonna do so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change that in my filter settings. So I'm going to bring my exposure value down a little bit. So you'll notice when you bring your exposure value down, suddenly this image matches your background a little bit more, but it also, you can see the materials more and everything doesn't look super overexposed. And so you can adjust some of these other settings as well. Like usually I'll turn the contrast up a little bit more. If the contrast is down, things start looking kind of gray, but you can kind of adjust that based on, uh, based on your best prerogative for the way that this image looks. But you can also affect some of these other things like your slope, or um, some of the other stuff in here as well. Kind of play around with your tone mapping settings, but the big one here was getting that exposure adjusted so our image wasn't overexposed. And so now that we've got this kind of set um, with the exposure value that we want, if you wanted to, you could go in here and you could uh, re or update this scene with that new camera setting by clicking on the update scene, just in case you were, um, just so that you can get back to it quickly. But now what I want to do is I want to go into my outdoor settings and I want to focus on the two other options in here, which is going to be our sunlight and our skylight. And so these are going to affect different things. So the sunlight, if we crank this up a little bit, you can see how the sunlight is going to basically use an artificial sun to simulate the brightness or the action of an actual sun inside of the model. And so this, if we were to change things like our time of day or something like that, is going to affect the way that your shadows are going to look inside of your model. So notice when I make this adjustment, we get shadows coming off of this roof now. And you can find adjust these by adjusting the solar height and the irradiation angle. And so what those do is those affect the angle of the sunlight that's coming down as well as the height of the sun. So like a higher sun is gonna cast shadows more straight down 
a lower sun is going to cast shadows further away. And so we can use this to simulate the shadows inside of our model. And a lot of the time what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at this image and try to figure out like what the shadows look like in the background image. So in this case, for example, you can see how this doesn't have very strong shadows because it's more of a cloudy day. So we might turn our sunlight intensity down so that we don't get super pronounced shadows because if our shadows are super pronounced, they're not going to match with our background and things just aren't going to look right. So for this, we might turn our sunlight intensity way down until we can barely see a shadow. Um, and we might also set our sun height a little bit higher. So you get kind of a very, very subtle effect for our shadow to try to match this background. And so we'll take a look at a little bit more of this in a second. You can also adjust the, uh, the uh, color temperature of your sunlight. So if you have an image, for example, it's very orange, you can adjust your color temperature so that the sun that's shining down is also kind of orange. Or if it's the other way, if it's more of a white or a blue, you can adjust it a little bit here. And you can see how it's a very fine difference when we do this, but this is definitely in here. And so now I want to take a look at the skylight. So that's going to be the HDRI image that's in the background here. But before I do that, I did want to come in here and point out um, this is one of the reasons why D5 render is a big deal. Is if you look at these, uh, if you look at the glass in here and look at some of the reflections of the background, you're going to notice that that's updating in real time and it's very detailed. So the real time ray tracing of the actual lighting inside of this model is very realistic. Um, due to the real-time ray tracing that's built into this program. So that's one of the things that makes this program powerful. And I wanted to make sure we at least took a look at that to see that we can see not only through the glass, but also depending on the opacity of the glass, we can see the reflection of what's going on behind us as well. And so the last thing I wanted to look at inside of this rendering is our skylight. So we're going to go back to this camera view right here and take a look at our skylight. So inside of D5 render, you have the option to use a skylight or an HDRI image in order to cast light inside of your model. And so you can find that inside of your sky section and notice that you can actually come in here and load in your own if you want to, or you can use some of these built-in backgrounds. But one of the things you're going to notice when you mess around with these backgrounds is the lighting for each one is different. So notice how um, the way this is lit is different depending on the HDRI image that we're using. So the overall lighting is basically being generated by this image. So the environment lighting is generated by the image. The lighting that's actually going to generate our shadows is being generated by our artificial sun, which right now is turned down. Notice that we can turn that up by adjusting our sunlight intensity, which we'll do a little bit more of in a minute. But notice that for each one of these, they look a little bit different. And then you could also load in your own. And so what we want to do is, first of all, we want to click on this little three dots right here, and we want to rotate this. Because what we want is we want an image where the background kind of like fits in with what we have in here, but we also want to take a look at where our sun is coming from. So for most of these images, they actually have a sun associated with them. So you can see how in this one, there's a sunlight right here. So that's where most of the lighting is coming from inside of this scene. So if I zoom in, what we want to do is we want to try to align our artificial sun with that light. So in this situation, what I want to do is I want to rotate this so that my sun is actually in the sky over here. So it's kind of high up in the background over there. And then what I want to do is I want to try to align my artificial sun with that sun location. Because if you remember, your artificial sun is what's going to cast your shadows and create your brightness. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to adjust our radiation angle until our shadows are being cast kind of down this way across our screen. So if we do that, then all of a sudden our lighting and our shadows actually kind of matches up with what we're seeing in our sky. So if we were to rotate this maybe a little bit more, then we could also do the same thing our artificial light here, maybe adjust our height a little bit, depending on how we want to do this. But notice that you can adjust the intensity of this light in order to brighten everything up. Or the lighting of our artificial sun and our shadows is matching up with this image. 
and you can kind of adjust this up or down. So maybe based on this image, I don't think the shadows are quite so pronounced. So what I might do is I might turn this sunlight intensity down and then go back to my exposure because I want the brightness of the whole thing to be a little bit brighter. So I might go into my filter and I might turn the exposure up on this image so that now everything's not looking washed out, but what it is doing is the overall lighting that's being cast in my model is kind of matching up with the overall lighting that you can see in the background. That's kind of your goal. And so now I've got this set up pretty much the way that I want it. Um, if I was trying to be super precise with this, I might change my camera angle a little bit more, but I think we're good right here. What I would do is I would go up to render. I would render this as a photo. Notice that you can adjust things like your field of view in here as well as the scale of your image and the size of your image that you're going to export. So in this case, for example, if I was to set this to 2K and maybe adjust this just a bit, maybe something like this, then what we could do is we could go ahead and we can export our image. So I'm gonna leave this as a 4K image. One thing you might wanna think about before doing this is you might wanna save this. So you might wanna do a save as, and save your image. You might also want to go in and update this scene with all your lighting settings, just like this. But then we'll just click on the button for export. We'll save this as test render and click save. And this is gonna go through and this is gonna render our image. So we'll just sit here for a minute and let this work. And then we'll take a look at the result that this generates. So now we're just gonna click on open folder. And we're just gonna open up the file that was created. So in this case, if we look at this file, you can see how you may want some more context in here to kind of block this out because it does look like this kind of got pasted in over an image. That's part of the reason why you usually see walls along the background here. But overall, you can see how the lighting is matching up with your image and you're getting reflections off of the glass that are showing part of the background. Overall, this gives you a really good image based on not having to do a whole lot of setup. So that should give you a good idea of how to set up your exterior lighting settings inside of D5 Render. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you tried D5 Render yet? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.